friends, it's Biz, and today we're going to get right into talking about the reversible causes of cardiac arrest. In the ACLS world, we refer to this as the H's and T's. Let's remember that there are some reversible causes to cardiac arrest, which this video will go over, but there are also causes that are not. During the mega code or your checkoff, the instructors would like you to verbalize that you're thinking about the H's and T's to determine if any of them apply to your scenario and then verbalize how you would reverse them. So let's go. All right, let's start with the H's. The first one is hypovolemia or volume depletion. So listen for any clinical clues that would indicate massive bleeding. Say maybe they're post-op or a trauma or loss of fluids through nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. For this patient, we're gonna to wanna to establish IV access and give fluids or blood products. The second H is hypoxia. This one is self-explanatory and most likely related to respiratory failure or airway obstruction. Listen for oxygen levels or request the reading during the evaluation of the patient. For this patient, you're gonna to wanna to request an ABG to determine what their gases are and give O2, ventilate, and then possibly intubate. The third H is hydrogen ions or acidosis. This can be either respiratory acidosis or metabolic. So think about the diagnoses like respiratory failure, sepsis, toxins, and DKA. For this patient, you're gonna also want to request an ABG to determine if it's respiratory or metabolic. Now, of course, if it's metabolic, we want to reverse whatever caused it. And for respiratory, we wanna give them bicarb to correct the acidosis. Hypo or hyperkalemia, so we're gonna to wanna to look at both high and low potassium. Hypokalemia, we're gonna to wanna to look at GI losses like vomiting or diarrhea, or another common culprit is the use of diuretics. But for hyperkalemia, we're gonna look at renal failure patients. For these patients, we're gonna want labs to see if potassium is an issue. If their potassium is too low, we're gonna to wanna to replace the potassium and if their potassium is too high, we're gonna to wanna to drive that potassium back into the cells with a combination of insulin and D50. And then we're gonna to want to protect the cardiac muscle by giving them calcium. Our last H is hypothermia. Suspect this for a patient scenario in which they are found down outside in extreme weather. And for these patients, we're gonna to want to rewarm them. Now on to the T's. The first T is tension pneumothorax. This is air that accumulates in the pleural space. Think about trauma patients and those who are already vented. For these patients, we're gonna to wanna to get an X-ray of the chest and treatment is gonna consist of needle decompression and or possibly chest tube placement. Next is cardiac tamponade, which is a buildup of fluid around the heart. Suspect this for patients who are post cardiac surgery or post cath lab and aortic dissections. For these patients, we're going to want a bedside ultrasound or echo, and to treat this, we're going to want to remove the fluid. The next is toxins. There are a gazillion different toxins, so suspect this for the patient that is presented with what I call like a sketchy story, like found with an empty pill bottle is one example. For these patients, we're going to want to look at EKG changes and then their history to figure out what is going on. Treatment is gonna consist of an antidote if there is one available. The last T is thrombosis. This includes both cardiac and pulmonary. Think of those patients presenting with classic substernal chest pain and shortness of breath. For the cardiac patients, we're gonna to wanna to get them to the cath lab stat. For the pulmonary patients, we're gonna to wanna to consider an embolectomy or fibrinolytics. All right. We have covered some of the reversible causes of cardiac arrest that will need to be utilized during your ACLS certification and in real life. A link to this algorithm can be found in the description. Remember, you do not have to memorize this for the test or the mega code, but you will need to be able to understand the concepts. I hope you found this video helpful and stay tuned for additional ACLS content.